Michael Matheson misused taxpayers' money. He made a false claim for £11,000. He misled the public, the press and this parliament. But when the scandal came to light, the SNP circled the wagons and backed him to the hilt. They said he was a person of integrity and character. The SNP said this matter was closed, but they must surely accept the full scale of the deceit and abuse of trust now it is proposed that he is banned from this parliament for 27 days. Now he is still sitting on the SNP benches today. So will John Swinney do the right thing and kick Michael Matheson out of the SNP and does the First Minister accept that the SNP were wrong to fully support Michael Matheson? Um, for, First Minister, um, we are of, of course clear that this session is to put questions to the First Minister in his capacity as First Minister and to address matters for which the Scottish Government has responsibility. And I will allow the First Minister to respond in relation to those responsibilities. Officer, at the outset, I have to make clear to Parliament that Michael Matheson is a friend and a colleague of mine. He has made mistakes, he has resigned from the Cabinet, and he paid the roaming costs in question. There has been no cost to the public purse. But as I consider the findings from the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee, I have a significant concern. I believe this process has been prejudiced, and let me explain why. Stephen Kerr and Annie Wells both made comments about this case long before it came to the committee that prejudged the case. Stephen Kerr, Stephen Kerr had the good grace to admit that he could not, and I quote, could not meet the committee requirement to be unbiased, so he removed himself from the committee. He was replaced by Oliver Mundell, who made no public comment on this case and I have no issue with Mr Mundell's participation in the inquiry. But Annie Wells did make public comments. On the 27th of November, Annie Wells said that Michael Matheson's, and I quote, desperate efforts to justify his outrageous expenses claim have been riddled with lies, cover-ups, and the need for us all to suspend our disbelief. Presiding officer, if a constituent came to me, if a constituent came to me and said they were about to face a disciplinary panel at work and one of its members had made prejudicial comments about them, I would come down on that employer like a ton of bricks. That is the situation that Michael Matheson is facing here, and that is why I will not be supporting this sanction. Douglas Ross. This is incredible. Michael Matheson claimed £11,000 from the taxpayer. He expected the taxpayer to pick up his... Mr Ross, Mr Ross, be gra very grateful if we conduct ourselves in a courteous and respectful manner, as required of us by standing orders. Mr Ross. Michael Matheson misled the public, misled the press, misled this parliament. He expected the taxpayers of Scotland to pay £11,000 for a bill that he had racked up. And it is not Annie Wells or Oliver Mundell or Martin Whitfield or Jackie Dunbar or Alistair Allen that found Michael Matheson guilty. It was the parliamentary corporate body that is represented by members across this chamber. Shockingly, John Swinney is standing here today defending the indefensible. MSPs must be honest. Michael Matheson wasn't. MSPs must act with integrity. Michael Matheson didn't. MSPs must be trusted by the public. Michael Matheson isn't. He has been banned from this parliament for a few weeks, but in the real world, he would have lost his job for what he did and what he claimed. Now, John Swinney has said in his own words, he and Michael Matheson 
are good friends and colleagues. They served in Cabinet together for almost a decade. So does John Swinney believe that Michael Matheson's actions, not any other sanctions, but his actions were acceptable and would they be acceptable for any Member of Parliament? And can I ask the First Minister if at any stage since this scandal first came to light, did he make any personal representations to support Michael Matheson? First Minister. President Officer, on Mr Ross's uh, last specific question, I, before I became First Minister, I drew the issues about Stephen Kerr's comments and Annie Wells to the attention of the Convener of the Standards Public Appointments and Procedures Committee, which I thought it was important for me to do as a senior, long-serving Member of Parliament, because I am interested in the integrity of this Parliament. <laughs> and unfortunately, and unfortunately, the integrity of the Parliament is being brought into question because you continue, First Minister. the integrity of Parliament is being brought into question because a member of the committee has not done what Mr Kerr did, which was accept that they should have recused themselves from the committee. Now I have no issue. I have no issue with the participation of the Conservative member on the corporate body, because Jackson Carlaw has made no public comments about this case. But I do have an issue where people have prejudged the case, because that brings this Parliament into disrepute. And I, and I come back, and I, and I come back, presiding officer, and I come back, presiding officer, to the point I made in my earlier remarks, that if a constituent came to me and said they were about to face a disciplinary panel at work and one of its members had made prejudicial comments about them, I would come down on that employer like a ton of bricks. Now, lastly, presiding officer, I said in my earlier answer that Michael Matheson had made mistakes. He resigned from the Cabinet. He lost his job as a member of the Cabinet and he paid the roaming costs in question. There was no cost to the public purse as a consequence of the issues that have been raised here about the conduct of this process, I don't believe this is a sanction that can be applied. Douglas Ross. This is incredible and indefensible by the First Minister. He said, he told us, when asking for our support to make him First Minister, he would be First Minister for all of Scotland. What Scotland is seeing is he's the First Minister that backs his pals. He is supporting Michael Matheson as a friend and colleague, not doing the right thing for Scotland or this Parliament. And I'm sorry. My colleague Annie Wells and Oliver Mundell and every member on that committee went in to do their job as they were asked to do by this Parliament. And if anyone has brought the Scottish Parliament into disrepute, it's a member who tried to claim £11,000 from the Scottish taxpayer and tried to get away with it. Now, the seriousness of this incident and the deep damage the conduct of Michael Matheson has done to public trust in this Parliament demands that he must resign. But we know from his conduct so far that he is unlikely to do that. What will shock and appall people across Scotland is he is now being endorsed by the First Minister of this country. So if the SNP are not going to do the right thing for Scotland, then I can announce today that the Scottish Conservatives will seek to bring forward a vote in this chamber next week. Our motion will state that Michael Matheson should resign for misusing taxpayers' money and making false statements to the public, the press and Parliament. Will John Swinney do what he promised he would and lead this government on behalf of the whole of Scotland and support our calls for Michael Matheson to resign or will he simply support his nationalist friend? Yeah. First Minister. President Officer, I, I don't think anybody could look at me and think that I am not an individual who cares deeply about the reputation and the integrity of this Parliament. I have been in this Parliament 
I have been in this Parliament for 25 years, since its foundation. It has been the privilege of my life to serve in this Parliament, and I am the only member of this Parliament who voted for the establishment of this Parliament in the House of Commons when the Scotland Act was put to the House of Commons in 1998. So I care deeply about the reputation and the integrity and the identity of this Parliament, which is why I think there is the risk that deep damage will be done to this Parliament's reputation if the issue... Do continue, First Minister. If the issue that I have raised is not addressed properly as I invited the Standards Committee to address properly. So, no, I will not support calls for Michael Matheson to resign. Michael Matheson has suffered significant uh, reputational damage and impact on his and impact on his family as a consequence of losing office and the difficulties that have been p created here. And he has paid all of the Roman costs in question. There is no cost to the public purse. And I think this Parliament needs to consider seriously the reputational issues that will arise from presiding over an unfair process. Douglas Ross. The First Minister has to consider carefully his reputation and the reputation of this Parliament if he continues down the route he seems to be going. Let's be clear, if our motion is successful next week and Michael Matheson does the right thing, finally, and resigns as a member of this Parliament, the people of Falkirk West could have the chance on the 4th of July, when there's a general election anyway, to choose an MSP who is honest and an MSP who has integrity. Michael Matheson made a false claim for £11,000. That is beyond doubt. He was untruthful to the press, to the public and Mi to Parliament. Sorry, Mr Ross. Mr Fitzpatrick, I would be grateful if you would desist from commenting from your seat. Mr Ross, do continue. Michael Matheson made a false claim for £11,000 of taxpayers' money. He was untruthful, without any doubt, to the public of Scotland, to the press who cover our proceedings, and to this Parliament, including our presiding officer. But the SNP claimed there was nothing to see here. They defended Michael Matheson every step of the way, and the First Minister is continuing with that today. Anyone in the real world would have lost their job for what Michael Matheson did. But John Swinney is saying today that it's acceptable for an MSP to take public money and then not be honest about it because he disagrees with a sanction of this Parliament. Well, I have to say the public disagrees and they will soon have the chance to have their say on this scandal. They have an opportunity to remove SNP politicians who let them down. In seats up and down Scotland, it will be a straight fight between the SNP and the Scottish Conservatives. So does John Swinney believe that the SNP will be punished for their handling of this scandal and his actions on the 4th of July? First, First Minister, First Minister. Um, before you respond, First Minister, I would remind chambers that I would remind members that the chamber is not the place to campaign um, for a UK general election. I do not want campaigning to distract members from their focus on issues that are the responsibility of this Parliament and the Scottish Government. First Minister. President, President I think um, Douglas Ross's last question to me reveals what this is all about. Because I have, uh, I have set out that Michael Matheson made mistakes, that he has resigned from the Cabinet and that he paid in full the costs of the roaming charges, so there has been no cost to the public purse. Now, my job as First Minister, as I promised Parliament, is to improve the lives of people in Scotland. My challenge in doing that is that I'm having to lead a government that is having to face up to 14 years of punishing austerity from the United Kingdom government. I'm having to lead a government that's having to face up to the consequences in Scotland of Brexit. I'm having to lead a government facing the hard realities of the cost of living crisis that's been inflicted on our country by the mismanagement of the economy by the Conservative government. 
I look forward to setting out to the people of Scotland in this election the difficulties that have been created by the folly of Douglas Ross and his colleagues, and I know the people of Scotland will support the SNP in that process.